Oh, the world of ad powers and progressive lenses and bifocals. How do you know what to get or if you even need them? Well, let's take a look and try and figure all that out, shall we? Because there's a lot of options out there. So when it comes to having an ad power on your prescription, that right off tells you you need a little help right here versus what you need out there. As far as how you get there and what any of that means, well, now that's where it gets a whole lot more complicated. This little chart here gives you some of the basics of the information as far as you know, kind of basic progressives, a little bit nicer progressives there, task specific progressives here, line bifocals here, which if you're not familiar, line bifocals are these old school guys that have that very specific lined segment in the lenses and you can see there how that works. You get a little bit of magnification, a little bit of image jump and some other things in those. That one, just 150, kind of off the shelf, ready made bifocal lens. Yeah, 150. <laughs> I remembered that right. But what you're looking for is essentially something to help you read when you've got your regular glasses on, right? Well, no. You're looking for something to help with everything for the most part, right? Maybe you need a little help with computer. Maybe you need a little help reading really small print right here. Maybe you need really small print out here. I don't know what you're doing and that's what we talk about and figure out if you need other lenses. But as far as just kind of a general guideline, what if you don't really need out here too? What if you only need far away and up close? Well, that's where the line bifocal works, or in the case of having a lower ad power, if it's around 150, there's a reason I keep that Plano 150, is, you know, it's got a nice range of vision to it. With the 150, you're gonna see from about 18 inches to typically about 30 inches out, depending on how much ad power your eyes themselves can supply, you can even bring that in a little bit closer. That's what happens with age. The lens in our eye just doesn't add that plus power as well as it once did. So we need something else to help do that for us. We still have plus power left in our eye. We can get some of that closer. But what I want to focus on here is the differences between all of these different types of lenses. And in the case of progressive lenses, what that means is what you see here. Those are going to give you the blue part is going to be the far, far away. The majority of the lens is going to open up at the top. As you look down below the pupil, that power just gradually increases, giving you kind of this little green slot here. Depending on the lens design, that's going to change dramatically, and this is not a very good representation of how that works in the real world. So keep that in mind. But what it amounts to, that's going to be the out here part of the lens, out here, right here, where I'm looking at you. That's what that is, okay? But, you know, that doesn't always work out in practice because then you have to do this to see out of that part of the lens to see right here at the camera screen. Fortunately, I'm not there yet, so I can still look through this part of the lens. That's the other great thing about progressives. When you're looking at one, unless you really understand the physics of how light passes through the lens, well, the average person isn't gonna look at a progressive lens and say, oh, you're wearing progressive lenses. It's great. The bifocal lenses, of course, you can very obviously see those. They are definitely there. There is a very clear segmentation of the lens. Anybody that is looking at the glasses can pretty well tell that's there. Still extremely beneficial. The big thing with these, you don't have kind of that blur off to the sides of the lens that you get in progressives. There's less motion distortion. There's less motion blur. There's less motion period as you move your head around. That's where these guys come in great. But I bet you didn't know this existed. There is actually an option in between the two and they're becoming more and more popular. And there's a couple different versions of them now. 
what it amounts to is the way lenses are surfaced now, it's totally different than what it used to be. Now we can specify powers in the lens and surface it point by point all the way across the lens surface. Uh, different manufacturers call this different things. What it amounts to is freeform generator surfacing where it is one little diamond point grinding out the lens versus the old big circular laps that used to be used to do it that limited things in different ways. Those still have their perks, but that is another story. I'm not gonna get into that specific topic today. But my point with that freeform surfacing is that it has allowed for the creation of new types of lenses that couldn't be made like that before. Kind of gotten back to the old way of fusing lenses in glass, which I used to have one over there. <laughs> it's not there anymore. Oops. Anyways, what it amounts to now, instead of this specific lined segment that you see here, we can actually make that into the lens without the line. Bear with me. This is not the old blended bifocal you think of where they just took that segment and kind of ground it out flush with the rest of the lens, which gave you like a four millimeter blur zone. Three to four, depending on the way it was done and the craftsman that was doing it at the time on that day the humidity and everything else that could play into it okay there's just a lot of variables there but on average three to four millimeters for that blend zone these are actually made in a way that it's just like the older you've probably never seen them but it was a round segment now we can actually digitally surface that into the back side of the lens and put it wherever the hell we want so you know, fishermen that only need that little bit of ad power, we can put it off to the side down here. So right there, you can bait your hook over here and then everything else is crisp, clear, far, far away, right? You can see this has a ton of applications in other ways, but the great thing there is it gives you just that near power where you need it without distorting the rest of the lens to really give you that open distance field when you need it. That's excellent, right? We care about optics here, so that's an important thing. And that's just not on here, okay? You're gonna notice this is not something you're gonna find from the big guys out there, because they just don't care. There are also digital ad lenses, or dual ad lenses. I, you know, I can't even remember today. They're DAL, it's the short acronym versus PAL, which is a progressive ad lens. <sighs> that's this thing up here, okay? But the DAL is a lens that gives you kind of that boosted zone at the bottom of the lens, like a line bifocal would, like that digital round segment would, but it's over a little bit larger field. It's a more useful lens. It still does have a few of the problems of the old line bifocals and that you still do get pretty, pretty good jump there in the image. It ramps up pretty quickly, so you get into that zone quickly good or bad, both of those options give you a way to have an ad power there that you can't see looking at the lens, but it gives you all of the benefits of the ad power. I've actually been using that a lot recently in place of the line bifocals because the world the way it is, line bifocals just aren't as available as they used to be. When they are available, they are not available in the newer materials that I like to use. So if we want to use something that has maybe the blue light blocking built into it, we can't do that in the line bifocal. So we jump to our little digital bifocal. Lots of advantages to that, but it opens up a lot of different things. Kind of the takeaway from this, or at least what I want you to take away from this, is that there are more options than the canned options that most people love to give you, which is, do you want the basic progressive or the fancy progressive with the wider zones, which isn't even true, but that's another story for another day. Yeah, I think this is a little wide of a topic. I'm trying to compress it down and condense it and make it easy. Hopefully we've done that, but I know you're gonna have questions about this, so we'll kind of run some parts on these other different lenses. Just a brief overview to give you some idea you know I love to do this to give you an idea that there are so many options when it comes to your lenses and your glasses. And yeah, hell, I like different and different options. So I just don't do things the same way as everybody else. 
that's the way it is. And you can like it or hate it or love it. Hopefully you love it and you're here and you stay a while. And speaking of, if you are new and you made it this far, you probably want to hit that subscribe button and just hang out for a while because we do a lot more stuff like this where we go over the different lens tech and life is finally setting out. So we should be getting back to doing this consistently again. I'm gonna work on that. Consistency matters. Anyways, that's all I've got on this one for today. Let me know your feedback and thoughts on this down below. I imagine you have never even been introduced to some of the lenses I mentioned today. So let's talk about that some more in some other videos, but let me know your questions down below so I can know specifically what to address and the rest of that going forward. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. I will catch you guys next time.